Welcome to Genuine Truth, where we dive profound into the subtleties of human cooperation and correspondence. In this episode, we investigate the entrancing universe of nonverbal communication, revealing the secret messages passed on through unpretentious signals, articulations, and stances. From the inconspicuous raise of an eyebrow to the delicate bit of a hand, each development recounts to a story, uncovering insights about our feelings, expectations, and connections. Go along with us as we set out on an excursion to decipher the complexities of nonverbal correspondence, revealing insight into the significant effect it has on our day-to-day -day routines. Through shrewd investigation and pragmatic models, we'll investigate the meaning of eye-to-eye-to-eye -eye -eye connection, grins, motions, and substantially more, disentangling the secrets of human way of behaving and association. Prepare to find the genuine truth behind each development, articulation, and signal as we set out on this edifying excursion together. Welcome to Genuine Truth, where understanding the implicit language of life prompts further associations and more extravagant encounters. Here are the signs. 1. Eye contact. Eye-to-eye -eye connection is a principal part of nonverbal correspondence. At the point when somebody keeps in touch during a discussion, it connotes consideration, commitment, and interest. It demonstrates that the individual is effectively tuning in and engaged with the cooperation. Eye-to-eye -eye connection can shift in force and length relying upon social standards, individual character qualities, and the idea of the connection between people. Understanding the subtleties of eye-to-eye -eye connection can assist people with exploring social associations all the more actually, building affinity and cultivating positive connections. 2. Smiling Grinning is a general articulation of satisfaction and positive inclination. A veritable grin, frequently alluded to as the Duchenne grin, includes the muscles around the eyes, making the eyes crease or grin alongside the mouth. This kind of grin is viewed as more genuine and true contrasted with a constrained or considerate grin that just includes the mouth. In any case, it's fundamental to perceive that not all grins are certified. Certain individuals might grin as a social show or to veil their actual sentiments. In this manner, it's fundamental to consider other nonverbal prompts and the setting of the circumstance when deciphering a grin. 3. Mirroring. Reflecting or mimicry is a subliminal way of behaving where people emulate the nonverbal communication, signals, looks, or discourse examples of others. It frequently happens during social communications, especially between individuals who feel a feeling of association or compatibility. Reflecting is accepted to be a nonverbal sign of compassion understanding, and common enjoying. Furthermore, reflecting can be utilized purposely as a social leverage methodology to lay out compatibility or construct trust in relational connections. By unpretentiously reflecting the non-verbal communication of others, people can make a feeling of commonality and solace, causing the other individual to feel more quiet and responsive. 4. Proximity. Closeness, or the actual distance between people, is a significant part of nonverbal correspondence that impacts social collaborations and connections. The distance kept up with between individuals can pass on different messages about their degree of closeness, solace, and limits. Understanding the elements of nearness can assist people with exploring social circumstances all the more successfully, guaranteeing that they regard others' very own space, while likewise cultivating a feeling of closeness and a sense association when suitable. 5. Touch. Contact is a strong type of nonverbal correspondence that can convey a great many feelings, expectations, and social implications. People have a characteristic impulse for contact, and actual contact assumes a vital part in building and keeping up with connections. Understanding the job of touch and correspondence can assist people with exploring social communications delicately and really cultivating further associations and improving relationship fulfillment. 6. Posture act alludes to the manner in which people position their bodies while sitting, standing, or moving. A nonverbal sign passes on data about an individual's feelings, perspectives, and character qualities. Stance can impact how others see and cooperate with people in group environments. Accordingly, focusing on stance can further develop how others see you as well as impact your own contemplation, sentiments, and ways of behaving. By embracing a sure and open stance, people can project confidence and authority upgrading their social communications and connections. 7. Gestures Signals are developments of the hands, arms, or body that go with discourse and convey importance in correspondence. They are an essential part of nonverbal correspondence. 
upgrading the expressiveness and lucidity of verbal messages. Generally speaking, signals assume a fundamental part in correspondence, adding extravagance and subtlety to verbal cooperations and working with shared understanding between people. 8. Facial Expressions Looks are maybe the most strong and all-inclusive type of nonverbal correspondence. They include developments of the muscles in the face that convey a great many feelings, mentalities, and goals. The human face is equipped for delivering great many various looks, each with its interesting mix of muscle developments and subtleties. Looks are urgent for communicating feelings like bliss, misery, outrage, dread, shock, and repugnance, among others. Accordingly, focusing on looks can help people comprehend and decipher the basic feelings and expectations of others, working with more viable correspondence and more profound associations and friendly connections. 9. Hair play. Where hair play alludes to any control or change of the hair, for example, whirling, stroking, or throwing. A typical nonverbal way of behaving can convey different feelings, perspectives, and goals. Notwithstanding, it's fundamental to consider the specific circumstance and recurrence of hair play when it is importance to deciphering. At times, extreme or tedious hair play might show apprehension or weakness instead of tease. Generally, hair play is a flexible, nonverbal way of behaving that can convey a scope of feelings and expectations, improving social connections and adding profundity to relational connections. 10. Body orientation. Body direction alludes to the course where people position their bodies comparative with others during social collaborations. A nonverbal prompt passes on data about their degree of commitment, interest, and consideration. In this way, focusing on body direction can give important bits of knowledge into individuals' sentiments and expectations, assisting people with exploring social cooperations all the more really and construct more grounded associations with others. 11. Blushing. Becoming flushed is a physiological reaction portrayed by the blushing of the skin, especially on the face and neck, because of humiliation, modesty, or excitement. It happens because of expanded bloodstream to the veins close to the skin's surface, bringing about a noticeable flush or blushing of the skin. In general, becoming flushed is a characteristic and compulsory reaction that gives significant bits of knowledge into individuals' personal states and responses in friendly circumstances. By understanding the fundamental causes and implications of becoming flushed, people can explore social collaborations all the more delicately and actually encouraging further associations and common comprehension with others. 12. Preening. Trimming alludes to prepping ways of behaving or changes made to one's appearance, for example, fixing clothing, fixing hair, or streamlining wrinkles. A typical nonverbal conduct serves both pragmatic and social capabilities. Generally, dressing is a characteristic and versatile way of behaving that assumes a huge part in friendly communications and self-show. By focusing on dressing ways of behaving, people can acquire experiences into individual self-discernments, close to home states and social inspirations, upgrading their comprehension and adequacy in friendly circumstances. 13. Foot pointing. A foot guiding alludes toward the heading wherein people position their feet during social connections. A nonverbal sign gives important experiences into their degree of interest, commitment, and profound association with others. In this manner, focusing by walking pointing can give important experiences into individual sentiments and goals, assisting people with exploring social communications all the more actually and fabricate more grounded associations with others. Along these lines, focusing on head slant ways of behaving can assist people with conveying compassion, construct affinity, and fortify social bonds with others cultivating further associations and shared figuring out in relational connections.